Welcome. I'm pleased to be here and to be able to talk to you. Uh, my talk will be on Whitehead's cyclic theory of learning and instruction from a very specific point of view. I will try to talk about um, creating data if his approach is efficient or more efficient than tradi traditional uh, instructions or more traditional instructions. To my knowledge, nobody has ever tried to do that so far. So we'll, and as you will see, if you want to do that today at the at, at education department, it will be have to do, it's, it's quantitative research, it's statistical research, and uh, you will see. Anyway, let's start. Uh, you all know Alfred North Whitehead. Oh yes, of course, of course you can. Yeah. So maybe I also should add that I may skip some slides because I, of time. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you will tell them. Uh, okay. Okay, you know, normally uh, learning cycles or cycles, or I don't know, what's the right pronunciation in English? Learning cycle? Cycles? Mm -hmm is uh, attributed to Alfred North Whitehead, but it's also is true that uh, John Dewey uh, was one of the earliest uh, who got interested in science education. In 1915, for instance, in 1915 he published in the General Science Quarterly a paper method in science teaching, which also comes close to a cyclic or cyclic approach. So, I think I can be quick here but I, because I can presuppose that you all know Whitehead's learning cycles, romance, precision, and a full learning cycle according to, uh, to Whitehead consists three phases, romance, precision, and generalization. The new aspect is that romance always has to precede precision. In traditional learning, we only have precision. So in the romance phase, the student has every freedom to explore a, a, a task, a problem, um, um, by bringing his own knowledge, prior knowledge, to that this problem situation. Just as Sinan has told us for, in his uh, domain. Yeah. Yeah. The teacher's role here is to select a good task or a good problem which is relevant for the students. So he has to know his students in order to do that. And in the precision, uh, the, otherwise uh, in the romance phase the teacher is passive and the student is active. In the precision phase that changes. The, the, the teacher becomes more active and introduces concepts, the state of the arts in the specific science, say, say uh, the test, the confirmed hypothesis and whatever else. And then in the generalization phase, which is a return to romance according to Whitehead, uh, the student again is confronted with a problem, with a task, uh, um, which uh, allows him or her uh, to apply what the concepts and what he has learned so far in the precision phase and in the romance phase. There's one important thing with the precision phase. It, it seems like it's traditional teaching, but it is not correctly traditional teaching because the teacher has to introduce the concepts by connecting them them uh, to the results of the students learning in the romance phase. So that his concept introduction is an answer to an open question. So while usually in traditional education the teachers present answers to questions that nobody had asked before. So this teaching and learning is very demanding in this learning cycle approach. It's, it's demanding to the student and to the teacher. It's a very uh, difficult way of teaching and learning, I have to say. Um, we should keep this in mind. I will come back to this later. Okay, uh, I will skip this because there's another uh, similar three-cyclic learning process uh, um, uh, uh, developed by Robert Kapus, an Austrian uh, physicist who came to the United States. He was born in 1930, he came to the United States and uh, taught physics at Berkeley and got interested in science teaching. I'll just tell you the story because his daughter was in elementary school and he was invited. And he thought maybe we should make that better in elementary school with science teaching. I'm just telling you this. And it's almost the same learning cycle. Look at that. Um, romance he calls exploration, which is romance is exploration. Concept introduction is precision in Whitehead. And application is generalization. You apply it to different other fields. So it's very similar. And I'm not quite sure if he got the ideas from Whitehead. He, he went to Jean Piaget in, in Europe to study with Jean Piaget. Uh, and came back with these ideas. I don't know. Uh, I have some suggestion here that 
I'll be stopping in a minute. Maybe Arnold Ahrens, uh, who taught at Washington uh, University, who's one of the fathers of science teaching in America, it, along with Carplus, uh, knew Whitehead, and Carplus knew Arnold Ahrens. Maybe that's the connection, but I'm no historian, and I just don't know exactly. That's what I wanted to say. It's not so important, I think. It's just, uh, uh, yeah. So by the way, his brother just earned the Nobel Prize in chemistry. He's already dead, but his brother Martin uh, Karplus earned the, yeah. They both were Vienna born in Austria, so. The Austrian government tried to occupy their Nobel Prize and Martin said, no, we had to flee from Austria. You know, he, so, that, but that's a different story. Just uh, want to tell you, so it's. So you, you can, if you, there's a, there's a book published by Robert Karplus, A Love for Discovery. The title says everything, I guess. So, okay. Now, the three cyclic, three phase learning cycles has recently been, or for a few years ago, as you see, uh, 20 years ago or something, been um, extended by some other, um, by Roger Bybee to a five e learning cycle. It's only that the precision, uh, the phase of romance is, is divi divided in engagement and exploration, which both is present in Whitehead as well as in Carplus. That's no problem, you know? And then you have the explanation phase, the concept, concept introduction phase, and then again, uh, the generalization phase or application phase is uh, the, divided into elaboration and evaluation. I just mentioned this. There's a lot of things going on which is very, very similar to Whitehead, which you never hear in Whiteheadian circles. I don't know why, but it's the case, yeah. So uh, uh, the five e-learning circles is propagated by the NASA to, for science teaching. You can find that at their website, which you, which you see here. You know, uh, you can find an introduction to e, five e overview and introduction to five e learning cycles. Yeah. So it's not something esoteric or something else. I always have to tell this to my colleagues. You know, that's why I'm telling it here. So it's uh, important. It's something that's people who know what they are talking about usually. So they also have an ideal uh, uh, example of an, a learning cycle online, you can download this, it's on electricity. So they propagate uh, implementing the learning cycles approach in science teaching, physics and chemistry and biology. So I just wanted to draw your attention to this uh, thing. Well, now in Austria, we tried to um, have a, yeah, of course, yes. Now, we in Salzburg were wondering uh, if we could make an evaluation of the learning cycle approach. Is it better than traditional uh, um, uh, teaching? And we first um, designed a pilot study which mainly aimed at uh, testing the, te the, the measurement instruments. Are they good enough for measuring all the accomplishments that we could hopefully achieve by uh, implementing the learning cycles approach? So you, hear, you see the, the research design of that first pilot study that take, took one year, you know? First we wanted to have it only f six months, but then we, we were wondering how do you measure the effects? This is one of, was one of the biggest questions, because you cannot take tasks that you use for inert knowledge, reproducing something. So it's, it, it, we almost thought we will, will not be able to, to, to do the study because we, we have no measurements for this complex at once, you know? That, if it takes place, we should be able to measure. So uh, finally, we found by chance, I have to say, um, that at the King's College in London, Michael Shea and his colleagues had developed um, um, a, a, a class test, a test for the whole class uh, based on Jean Piaget's uh, uh, clinical interviews. So that allowed to, to attribute, uh, to, to um, show at what levels or sub-levels cognitive the students are. And you can make a pre-test and a post-test and, and uh, try to, to see uh, the advancements. Yes? Yes, uh, if, if, they have, uh, if they have achieved due to better than the traditional oh. class. There are two classes, just a moment, maybe, maybe. There are two classes, the treatment class and the normal, uh, we call it control group or con control class, uh, they get, the treatment class gets the learning cycles and they get no learning cycles, but they get traditional learning, yes. It's a very common uh, design, research design. 
uh, although we, it's a quasi-experimental design because we could not randomly assign uh, the students to the different classes. It's for ethical reasons and for organizational reasons not possible. So it's a kind of field experiment. Okay, we also did measure intelligence. We used the culture-free test by Ketel and Ketel. Uh, because we also have lots of, of refugees in Austria who are not able to speak German very well, so it's important. Uh, then we have the science reason task that I just mentioned, two in the beginning, two in the end. Uh, we also have a questionnaire concerning interest in science from the German University in Kiel. Um, it was used for thousands of German students, you know, uh, pre-post measurement. Here it is, question again. And we have also a questionnaire for emotions. How did, do the students feel emotionally during, during uh, classes? You know? uh, these emotions were always um, uh, um, measured after or during the learning cycles, the different phases of the learning cycles. Yeah? How do you feel in romance phase? How do you feel in precision phase? How do you feel in, in, in generalization phase? So. A tradition, yes, uh, oh, sorry. A traditional teaching mainly is the teacher standing there, talking to the students, the students being passive, writing down, yeah, learning by heart and reproducing at the test. I think it's similar to in China. And if there are, are experiments, it's only after the, uh, first the concepts have been introduced to show that it's true. You know? But the, the teacher does the experiment, not the students. And it's just, it's, the students still are passive in the experiment. Physical, physical or chemical experiment, okay. okay. So uh, it was a quasi-experiment designed with two schools. You see the students here. Uh, I talked about the culture fair, I will just skip this. The interest uh, could talk a lot about each measurement tool to you, but it's not, uh, not very uh, interesting. Here you have the science reasoning tasks. We, we've, uh, uh, Michael Shea from uh, King's College did send them to us and said we, should, we can use them, yeah? So, and they have been used in thousands of British uh, students, uh, pupils, so far. So we have very good test data on that, so. Um, yeah, and he was the one who said, you should not do this only for six months. You have to do this for at least one year if you want to be sure to, to get effects, because it's so demanding. The teaching is demanding, and the teachers have to get used to it. And it's demanding for the students, and the students have to get used to it. And we, in fact, found out that when the students first are confronted with tasks and questions to solve the task, they don't know to, what to do at all. You know, it's just because they're not at all used to thinking themselves. So the science, examples of the science reading tasks. Uh, here are a few pictures of how the students were learning. I will skip the, the results. I will only say we got mixed results. It, it seems that the learning cycle is working better than the traditional ones. And it, particularly, the students have better emotions, positive emotions, than in the traditional. So I'll skip all this and go to our current research. I know it's already late, but I have to do this. So our current research, that was the pilot study first. Now we're coming to our two years research project that we started in fall of 2014. Uh, and now we've in May, we had our first measurements at the end of May or beginning of June um, after the first year. Yeah? I have brought the very first results the very first results from the first learning cycle in, in, in fall 2014 with me to share it with you. We do not, I cannot, I'm sorry, it's just the data are given in and we, we're not already not given into the computer and we have to uh, calculate it and it's, but I've tried to bring at least a little bit of something and that I would like to present. Is the first semester one whole cycle? No, 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 no. there are several cycles in there. Okay. There are several, I would have explained in the other thing. But yeah. Yes, there are many multiple uh, uh, cycles in one semester. Yeah. It can be longer ones, can be shorter ones, and, and even within a cycle, as Sinan said, we have to be careful. You know, it's, it's just a, a raw, how should I say, uh, hint or direction to, to, to see one cycle. As a, there are sub-cycles in each cycle. Yes, so, and White says that. Uh, Eddie's within Eddie's something he said like this, so. so. 
So we should be uh, certain about that. So I will just keep on. So the, the results, are a few, here you see the number of students taking place in the treatment class in the control group. TG is treatment group, TG and CT is control group. Treatment group is always learning cycle, and control group is the traditional teaching, okay? And here's the percentages of the people we have one class less that was due to organizational reasons in that school, you know? The, the teacher could only teach the treatment class and not the other one for what reasons beyond our possibilities to affect, yes? So and here you see the gender distribution, how many female, how many males. Uh, and uh, yeah, in, in the control group and in the gender, it's, th there's, a, there's a discrepancy in males. Yeah? You see that in the control group we have more male, which is good if it, we still have an effect because women have better, uh, have, have worse attitudes towards science, in, at least in the Western culture. So it's good that we have, uh, sorry, we have less less male in the treatment group, so. If we have an effect, we have the effect despite this, so, and not because of that. So that's very inter important for us, so, anyway. Here the language distribution, German speaking, students, non-German speaking, approximately same distribution, it's fine, okay. Here the distribution according to the grades, grade sec uh, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, but that's not so important. So now we come to the results. The first learning cycle, you know? Okay, uh, romance phase. In the first learning cycles, in all of the uh, schools, uh, uh, we have, four, uh, we have uh, 13 uh, classes participating. Something like good 300 per students. Yeah? Half of it, uh, seven of them treatment class and six of them uh, control group. So. And it will take two years, for two years, as you have seen. So we measured emotions for in the different um, uh, phases. And you, you see um, the, tr the learning cycle is dark, you know, and the gray one is the traditional uh, uh, teaching. So that this will stay the same for the whole thing. You see joy is significantly different so that in learning cycles, the, the students experience much more joy significantly more joy than do the students in, in traditional. Uh, proudness. The students in learning cycles highly significantly uh, experience jo uh, proudness instead it compared, as compared to the traditional. Uh, 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 interest in the subject. Again, highly significant differences between the, uh, the, the learning cycle and the traditional. And in boredom, it's just the other way around. You see that the bar is higher here at, for the control group, for the traditional group. They are more bored, traditional teachings are more bored than are the learning cycles group, yes? And the same holds for angriness. The bar for angriness is much higher than it is for the learning cycle group. So uh, that's very good results for the romance phase for, uh, in respect to emotions. So let's uh, go, uh, you, we, we could combine um, the joy, proudness, interest, and boredom if revised uh, to measure positive emotions. And if we compare them, I forgot to add the star. It's highly, two stars, highly different, uh, significantly different between positive emotions in general, are much more, are significantly different. Uh, there's more positive emotion in the learning cycles than there is in the so we, we, we combined them to build a scale for positive emotion. And you, here you have the Kronbach alpha uh, referring to the internal consistency, which you may not be interested in, but it's a statistical uh, measure. Yeah. Now we enter to the precision phase. And now you saw, according to White, the precision phase is traditional teaching. So if that is so, there should be no differences between the two. And as you see, not significant difference, no significant difference throughout, it's just the same. So that's what is to be expected. Exactly what's to be expected came out. You know? So, and also if we come, uh, again build the scale and look at the result, it's non-significant for the precision phase. Exactly what expected. So, and we come now to the generalization phase, the last phase, I'll be short, uh, well, as far as possible. Um, um, according to White, it's uh, returning to romance. 
And again, they get you know, tasks and they get, have freedom to explore themselves and stuff like that. Uh, and again, we have joy, a highly sign the, the, the stars are, uh, was a mistake, it should be right and left, but it's above and below. But anyway, it's highly significant, more joy in the learning cycle, more proudness in the learning cycle, and more interest in the learning cycles. The others are non-significant. And again, if we put together the joy and so, so on for the scale of positive emotions, we have a highly significant difference between the two in favor of the learning cycle. Yeah, now I could present you a treatment check. Uh, if the, that means, did the teachers in fact really implement uh, learning cycles? We, we had statements, specific statements. We were working together in a group, for instance, which is typical for romance phase, yeah? And the students answered after the lessons, and we found out that the teachers did a very, very good job. So I will not, can, for time reasons, not go into detail. But it's a wonderful results. We would be very happy if they would stay robust over the next learning cycles that come out. If so, we're, we're, very, we're, we're looking forward to, to the whole thing and to publish that. But I have not talked at all about cognitive advances because we do not know yet after one year. You know, that will be only able after two years. We are looking forward to that and we just can evaluate the single learning cycles so far. But what we know so far from the first one is very promising. And we hope, hopefully it stays that way. So uh, I think it's really, a the, the studies was done according really to the standards, today's standards of empirical research. And, uh, we hope that if it's, the results are as good as they seem to be, uh, that this could be really a, a push forward. It's because we could demonstrate that it's, that it's better than tra traditional uh, teaching. And even if it has no cognitive advance, I think it will have. But even if it does not have, it's better to have ch uh, children have experienced positive emotions, which in fact interest in the subject. And we want them to study such things and get into that professions. So. Uh, by the way, this is financed by the Austrian Industrial Association, this study. Yeah? So uh, I, I was wondering why I think they did not understand what it's uh, all about, because I know what they want to, the reform they want to uh, for the next coming years in Austria, and it's privatization of the whole school system. Yeah, that's what they want. But that's incompatible. That doesn't, will not work this way. But I wondered why have they done it? And then I thought maybe they have children of their own. You know, and they will send their children to schools, maybe in that schools they want to teach this way. Who knows? Nobody knows, but it could well be possible. You know, I don't want to be too negative, but um, you know. Okay. Anyway, I thank you for your patience. Thank you very much.